Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to look at a new feature in C++. Concepts in C++20. Talking about concepts can be a bit confusing, since we need to start by redefining what the word means. The English definition of the word concept refers to an idea. In C++, the word concept is now a keyword with a precise meaning which does not match the English definition. We found proposals for concepts dating all the way back to 2003. As with all new features, there were several very different and conflicting submissions. Over time, the definition of a C++ concept was narrowed down and the committee focused on solving just a subset of the original use cases. We need to define what a constraint is before we can talk about concepts. Then we want to touch briefly on what is missing, why concepts were added, and then show a few examples which will illustrate how to use them. The term constraint actually does follow the English definition, namely to limit or restrict Constraints are evaluated at compile time, and they define a limitation on the parameters of a template. You can add a constraint to a templated class, struct, method, or function. In this small example of a templated function, there are two template parameters named T and R. Based on the definition of a template, these are placeholders for a data type which will not be known until the function is compiled. Only the data types that are actually used in your application will be substituted for T and R. If a constraint is added for T or R, then those restrictions must be satisfied in order for this templated function to be instantiated and available at runtime. The syntax for declaring a constraint uses the requires keyword, which starts a requires clause. There are a few different forms of requires clauses with slightly different syntax. They all involve specifying an expression, which must be resolved to either true or false at compile time. Once the template parameters are deduced during compile time, validity of the requires clause is checked. When we take a constraint and associate it with a name, this creates a new concept. Declaring a concept is similar to declaring a variable. Once a concept is created, you refer to it by using its name. Naming something is a value when it will be used more than once. As with classes, the standard provides the ability to create user-defined concepts. They also added roughly 30 predefined concepts. Whenever possible, you should use those provided by the standard library before adding your own. One of the most common standard library concepts is STD copyable, which ensures the type can be copy constructed and copy assigned. The STD derived from concept checks whether one template parameter inherits from the other. The std invocable concept is only satisfied if the given function can be called with the provided arguments. In our first example, we have added a constraint to the template function. This constraint requires the amount of memory used for an object of type t to be the same as for an object of type r. This is a restriction which can be checked at compile time. If some function 1 is called with types which fail to satisfy the constraint, the call will not compile. The code in example 2 has exactly the same effect. However, this example associates a name to the constraint by declaring a concept with the name same size. There are several benefits to naming a concept. If there are multiple templates which need to enforce the same constraint, having a named concept prevents repetitive code. Another advantage is what happens in the error 
if the concept is violated. The compiler will refer to the same size concept by name. This is more descriptive and helpful than having to wade through a longer message which will contain the entire text of a requires clause. A discussion about concepts is incomplete without mentioning what was dropped in the standardization process. Over the last 15 years, there were multiple directions they tried, and ultimately the committee chose to implement a simplified subset of the original proposals. This is not to say that C++ concepts are useless. They are very valuable. They simply solve a different set of problems than the founders intended. There are reasons why sections were dropped. Most of the concerns centered around complications with the implementation, compiler performance issues, and poor user experience. There are two key elements which are not in the C++20 implementation of concepts, and there are people who feel this weakens concepts. The first component they eliminated was the detection of semantic errors. What we have now can verify the properties of a data type agree with the constraint. However, they cannot check any further. As an example, the third parameter to STD sort must be a function which accepts two elements and returns a Boolean value. C++ 20 concepts can verify the function signature. But STD sort requires this callback to implement a less than operation. How do you verify that? If you pass a not equals operator, the signature is correct, but the behavior is different and in fact undefined. This is a semantic error and cannot be detected by the current implementation of concepts. The other component which is not present is called separate type checking. This is defined as the ability of the compiler to check if the constraints are correct based on the body of the template. If the body uses an operation not guaranteed by some constraint, then a compiler error occurs. For example, if you wrote a template function which copies an object of type T and you did not specify the constraint that T must be copyable, the template would be reported as incorrect. This would have been a stunning and very powerful feature. Then again, having multiple missing constraint errors in every single template turned out to be a bit overwhelming and tedious to resolve. So what is gained by using C++ 20 concepts? As we stated, the effect of a requires clause or a concept will result in a constraint on the template parameters. An advantage of naming it and creating a concept is that reusing the constraint improves code readability. Our concept called same size gives the reader a decent sense of what boundaries are being placed on the types. No matter how experienced you are as a programmer, reading a template error can be complicated. The error messages are extremely verbose and often confusing. There is no magical procedure for learning how to resolve template errors, which can be hundreds of lines and the majority are meaningless. Sometimes the only strategy is to make a guess about where the error is actually happening. A single template error can cause massive lines of spew because template errors are found too late in the compile process. The error reported is basically a compiler stack trace with lots of extra details. With constraints, the compiler can report the problem earlier, so the stack trace is shorter and more meaningful. When developers start learning concepts, 
many of them seem to focus mainly on the improvements in error messages. There actually is a more powerful use of concepts, and this was the aim of the Standards Committee. They decided concepts should provide a better and more powerful way to handle template overloading. Prior to C++20, the only mechanism we had to resolve overloaded templates was sfine. This is a template metaprogramming technique used to eliminate a particular overload from consideration based on some compile time condition. sfine involves using features like decal type, enable if, and type traits to produce a side effect that will remove a particular template overload. Constraints can now be used in most places where we previously relied on sfine. This involves a shift in the way we write templates. Instead of thinking about how to get a template to fail, the new approach is to ask what are the constraints which guarantee the desired template overload will be valid. Here is an example of two overloaded template functions using sfine. If the code shown in red is true, the compiler evaluates the std enable if t and sets the data type of x to void. If the code in red is false, then the std enable if t does not produce a data type, so x is invalid. This causes a compile error and the corresponding template is discarded. If t is a pointer data type, then declaration A will be discarded and declaration B will be used. This is how sfine works. The compiler selects the overload based on the template parameters. The code shown here is perfectly valid and it works fine. However, it can be greatly improved by using constraints. This code does the exact same thing. However, now we are using constraints. The first thing you may notice is the code is easier to read and the condition for each template overload is clear. Declaration C uses a requires clause to specify that T must satisfy the STD floating point concept for this template function to be callable. This happens to be a concept which is provided by the standard library. Declaration D uses a type trait as the expression for a requires clause. The type trait std is pointer v must return true for this overload to be callable. Since this clause is not referring to a concept, the expression must be enclosed in parentheses. It is important to point out there are no parentheses in the constraint in Declaration C. The first example uses a concept, so you only specify the name, which happens to be std floating point. Currently, there are no concepts in the standard library to check if t is a pointer. We are not sure if this is an oversight, and it is likely more concepts will be added sometime in the future. Our examples have only demonstrated some of the ways constraints can be specified. There is another form which allows using a concept directly in the template parameter list. No matter which syntax is selected, constraints will result in templates which are potentially more reliable. This may be the first step towards templates which can be verified at compile time. For more information about CopperSpice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.